Hello, it's Dr. Rock here. So in this video, we're going to go over the OptiView Vivicon Fundus camera. This is the side where the patient puts their chin and their forehead. This is the other side of the camera. This is where we're going to enter our patient's information. So if they are an established patient who has done this machine before, they should be in the database. So here under search patient, you're going to type in their last name. So I'm going to use a test patient for today. And then if they are in the database, their name will pop up here and then you click it. This screen is touch screen. Sometimes it's really touchy. You have to sometimes hit the buttons multiple times. There is a stylus that we keep next to the machine if you rather use that. So once you have your patient's name pulled up, then you would hit capture. But let's say that they're a new patient or they're an established patient who has never done photos before, we need to add them to the database. So I'm gonna click the down button. This is gonna get rid of the keyboard for a second. And then there's a new patient button here at the bottom, the blue one. So we're gonna click that. And then you will need the patient's ID number. That should be on their clipboard at the top. And then we're gonna enter their first name, last name, date of birth. Now this one you have to put the year in first. That always messes me up. So do the year first and then the month and the date and then do their gender and then you would hit the save button here at the top, that blue button. So once your patient is added, they'll be selected and then we're going to hit capture. Once you have your patient's name pulled up and you've hit capture, you're going to have the patient lean forward, put their chin and forehead into the machine just like I showed you earlier and then we need to line up their eyes. So we have Baby Yoda here again, and you can move the chin rest up or down. You can move the whole table up and down, and then sometimes you even can have them move their chair up and down just so that they're comfortable and that you have the eye lined up here. Sometimes it will give you a little red box. It's not popping up right now because we have an artificial eye in here but it will tell you that it is happy with the pupil alignment for the patient. So we're gonna do the right eye first, so the, the machine is shifted over to the right eye and the right R here is highlighted blue. So when the patient is ready, we're just gonna hit start. And this is an automatic machine, it will automatically take the photo and focus for us. So I'm gonna let it run through a automatic scan. When you're done with the right eye, and we know that the photo turned out good, there's no blinking or eyelashes in the way, we can go to the left eye. So we're going to click this button, and the machine will move itself over to the left eye, and we can see that the L is now highlighted in blue. So we can see the patient's eye is a little bit off, so we can actually click the center of the pupil that's going to better align the machine before we take the photo. Once they're lined up, we can hit start. So sometimes we might have to do a photo in manual mode if the patient is moving around a lot and the camera is having a hard time focusing on the retina. We can switch over to manual by clicking this button. 
So now we need to zoom in and get the eye into focus ourselves. So I'm gonna click on forward and it's moving the camera closer to his eye. And then we can click left to center in the center of the pupil. And you're gonna keep going forward until you see those two small circles there. You wanna to try to get them as clear as possible, a, a nice circle. And then we can try to raise it up so that it's in line with these blue lines. All right, so we see both here, they're in line with the blue line. And then you're gonna tell the patient to keep watching the green light in there. And then we're gonna hit capture. And it does a quick focus and then takes the photo. The camera auto defaults to a central nasal picture, but sometimes the doctor might request a different fixation. So if we click on fixation, so we can see that central nasal is highlighted green there. So this is a little bit backwards. This is actually your nasal side on the left and temporal on the right. And this is for the right eye because the R is highlighted blue. And the reason this seems switched right now to us because this is the point of view of the patient and what they're seeing inside of the machine. So if the doctor requests a picture of the superior temporal, we're actually gonna click this button up here, superior on top and then the temporal side. They might wanna do uh, straight temporal, inferior temporal, straight inferior, inferior nasal, nasal, and superior nasal. So you can change the fixation, but I'm gonna change it back to central nasal. This is for the right eye, so I'm gonna click out of here and go to the left eye. I'm gonna click fixation. So now this circle here is highlighted because that is the central nasal of the left eye. So the outer side is now your nasal, or on the right here, and then the left side is your temporal. So that does get a little bit tricky. Um, we don't do a lot of re special request scans, but you never know if we have a patient who has a defect out in the periphery, we might have to change up the fixation. But most of the screening photos that we offer to the patients they're gonna be done in the central nasal fixation. After each photo is taken, it will pop up for a brief second to show you the picture. So if you see that the patient blinked or that there's some eyelashes in the way, you can repeat it. But if you happen to miss that pop up really fast, at the end, we are gonna review the photos anyway. So we're gonna click review. And then you can see both photos there. So we don't see any eyelids that are in the way or any eyelashes, so those are good quality. So we are gonna keep those photos, but now we need to export them to the back computer. From the back computer, we'll upload them to the patient's chart. So to export, a couple different ways you can do it. You can press and hold each photo, and then you see that it placed a green check mark in the top. And then down here on the bottom is the export. So we're going to press that. And then it does say export. It automatically selects it as a JPG. And then we'll hit OK. Again, this touch screen is very touchy. Sometimes you have to click multiple times. Um, that's the fast way you can export it. You can do each eye individually, so you can actually click on the photo, it will bring it up. And then the export button is here on the left, and we can hit export, OK, OK again, and then hit next down here to bring up the other eye. Click export, OK. Okay, and then to back out of this screen, we can hit the red X here. So you can do each eye individually or you can do them both at once just by pressing down 
in highlighting each one. Um, let's say that you have a bad photo in there, maybe the patient blinked or there's some eyelashes in the way. We don't have to keep it on the camera, we can delete it just so it's not wasting space on the um, hard drive. So let's pretend that I had this photo highlighted. Let's pretend that this one is a bad one. We can hit the delete button and it's asking you, do you want to delete it? You can hit OK. And then that way we don't have a clutter of bad pictures on there. And we can even go down to previous year's photos. This one was taken in May. And this is nice to see when the patient last did their photos. So once you have exported your photos to the back computer, you have to go to the computer that's located in the lab area. Uh, so this is at the Delaware office. And once you have logged into Revolution, you're going to bring up your patient's chart. So I'm going to open up mine here. And then once you have the patient's chart open, we're going to go down to health testing. Go to the second page, internal ocular evaluation. And then down here in the bottom right hand corner is the posterior pull section. This is where we're going to upload our fundus photos. So we'll click on upload. Click upload again. Choose file. So the photos are located under a network folder. So it's automatically popping up here. So let's say that it defaulted to this screen. We need to get to the right network folder. So it is this desktop FPL4TVR. I don't know what that stands for, but this is the folder that the photos will export to. So you want to open that folder and then go to the OptiView scans folder and now you'll have the list of the photos that were exported. So we want to upload the left eye first, so OS, and then we need to assign it to the photos folder, don't mind the phone there, sorry, and we'll click on photos folder and then click upload. And then now we need to upload the right eye. So we'll go back to upload, choose file, click on the right eye, assign it to the photos folder and click upload. The reason that we upload the left eye first and then the right eye is so that way the right eye is uploaded last and it will be put here at the top. And this just makes it easier for the doctor. So when we go to show the patient the photos in the exam room, if we click on this first one, it's the right eye, and then we click on the second one, which is the left eye. We're just used to kind of doing the right eye first and then the left eye, so we just like it in that order. If you happen to upload it backwards, it's not the end of the world. We just prefer to have the right eye on top there. So once you have them uploaded, you'll hit close. You can hit next to save, and then you can close out of the patient's chart. Now we do wanna go back in and delete the photos from the um, folder, just so that we don't get too many cluttered in there. So I went to network, I'm gonna find the FPL4 TVR folder, OptiView scans, and then I can delete both of those. That way next time when another patient's photos are exported, we don't have a lot that we have to search through. We just keep this folder empty to make it easy. When you're done using the machine, we'll have to clean it off. So you'll take an alcohol wipe and wipe the chin area and the forehead rest.